Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. An unexpected video here. This is kind of a last minute thing. I don't have anything actually planned out for this. What's going on here is I'm repotting a coconut palm, which some of that will be in a vlog that happened at some point. There's three different videos happening in my head right now that mostly pertain to this plant right here so things are just a little bit wonky in my head. So this is gonna be kind of loose, more of a vlog style thing because this video is more about troubleshooting issues with rotting nuts, rotting coconuts, the actual exocarp of your coconut. But really the best way to get this going before I can even start talking about what the issue is right in front of me that I'm talking about in this video, I need to talk about the anatomy of a fibrous droop or a coconut. I've gathered some of my nuts here. I have coconuts just scattered all over my garden. Anytime I go on vacation and I find coconuts, I tend to bring a whole bunch home and they just kind of end up like garden decor. So there are some examples here to work with. This is an entire nut here. It's just a dried up coconut. Technically not a nut, like I said before. These are considered fibrous droops. So what we're looking at right here is the exocarp. That's the outside of the nut. Then this here, this is the endocarp. This is what's inside of there. Generally, this is what you see at like a grocery store. It's more fibrous than this when they're at the store. They have pores. They usually have two plug pores, one uh, open pore here. That's where the seedling will actually emerge from the nut from within side, from inside here. Here's a better example. Here's one that's been outside for a long time. It's weathered quite a bit and it gives kind of a look at the entire situation here. Here's kind of the basics of a coconut. The outside shell, that is the exocarp, the outer layer, and then inside of that is the mesocarp. That's where that fibrous husk is. You can see it right in there. I probably have something up on the screen, like arrows hopefully, so those things are easier to see. And the inner shell, that is the endocarp. That is what surrounds the actual seed of what will be growing in there. And I can't go any further into that because I'd have to cut it open, have to get like a better cross section. That exocarp, the outer area, that's there to help protect the endocarp, this inside area where everything is. You can see back here, they do a pretty good job. I mean, coconuts are kind of notorious for being sturdy and tough and quite dangerous, actually. That's something you'd want to have planted in any area where they could fall on someone's head. They're very hard. Groundbreaking information, coconuts are hard. Uh, there's a reason I needed to talk about all that. I'm gonna explain it right now. Okay, so here is the actual coconut plant that I'm working with, this coconut palm. This one in particular has just had its own share of issues. All kinds of problems with this one. Mostly my fault though, not really the coconut's problem. Or the coconut's fault, I should say. I will have talked about it somewhat in a vlog or something else at this point, but basically I have a dog with a strong tail, just kept knocking the thing over. So it wasn't really able to root itself and establish itself as it should have. That's why I repotted it into a plastic pot right here so that it'll just be easier for me to move into a spot where my dog can't mess with it. I had it in a ceramic planter before and it was just something that I'm not supposed to be moving around right now. So there we go, a oh, lightweight pot, easier to move this someplace where my dog's tail won't be able to knock it all over the place. A problem I've encountered here, sometimes when you plant a coconut, that exocarp, that outside layer, will start to rot. Now, in nature, where they're growing just on their own as they please, and they have all of their ideal conditions, that would start to rot off. Now I have one right here that you can see is another kind of a cross section where the exocarp, the outside area, has started to rot but that endocarp is still in there. So what I did with this one is I just very slowly pulled all that fibrous material off of there. It wasn't too hard to get off. You can see when that starts to rot enough, comes off on its own. Since this is a potted plant, it's not one that uh, basically can just allow that to rot. If it were in the ground, I would just basically leave it alone. That's gonna break down, it'll provide nutrients to the plant. Indoors, however, growing a coconut palm inside during the winter time, rot is generally like the number one killer of these things when you have them indoors. So essentially, I felt I needed to eliminate any variable that I could and get that rotten material off of here. Sometimes getting that rotten husk off can be pretty difficult. You don't want to do it if it looks like it's going to do too much damage to the root. But this one, it had uh, become spongy enough that it peeled off fairly easily. The issue though is that now that this outer layer is gone, you can see it. This is pretty impermeable. Water moves around it, rushes off of it. Now that that's gone, there's nothing to protect the 
endocarp, which is going to be more prone to rotting now that it's exposed. Like I just said, rot is what, what we want to avoid in any situation, not just with a coconut palm, right? Traditionally, when you plant a coconut, this part is protected. And the actual whole nut would be planted with soil anywhere from a third to halfway around. Sometimes people will plant them down like this about halfway. Either way, traditionally, that endocarp right here isn't going to be getting a ton of water and soil on it because again, it's protected. This one, no longer protected. And that protection is no longer down here around these roots. This had husk around it. This had that material around it protecting it. It's not there anymore. Not the end of the world. There are ways around this. There are actually plenty of people who do coconut palm bonsai. I don't live someplace tropical enough where I think I could pull that off. It's something I've always wanted to do, but just haven't been able to bring myself to take the risk. I think this one right here is a little bit large to get going on that kind of a project. The point there being though is when those bonsais are done, the people who do those things take the endocarp, one that's actually a healthy one. This one's done. It's a dud. You can see all the stuff's gone. There's no material left in it. But what's done with those bonsais is traditionally, not always, but that exocarp is removed from this endocarp from the nut and then sometimes they'll take sandpaper and get it nice and shiny and pretty and put this on top of a vessel of water and that encourages the roots to start to move down into the water and then you start to actually get your plant sprouting up and out of it and then the process of training its growth and its roots start from there. What I've learned from looking into this the main trend I see is that this part right here very rarely is it submerged. Usually it's sticking up with the plant coming up out of it. I'm not confident that this plant has enough root structure yet to support itself without that endocarp on here. There's still nutrients in here. There's still life that's going to help feed the plant, protect the plant, and help get it through its first winter indoors. And it is a little bit loose. Otherwise, I was going to take some sandpaper and shine it up, which would, one, just look kind of cool, but it would also help move water around it and make it so that water can't stick to it quite as much. But like I said, it is a little bit loose, so I don't want to take the risk of actually detaching the plant from this nut just yet. It will stay attached to these endocarps, sometimes up to like three years, sometimes even longer than that. And it's a pretty vital part of getting them established in the beginning and like I said, getting them through their first winter indoors. So the problem here, oh, look at that. See, I need to get stakes in this already, the slightest breeze and it was ready to take this thing away. So essentially I don't want this submerged below the soil pretty much at all. I don't want to detach it. I can't have the soil level too far down from these roots because they haven't been exposed to light and air before. These roots will die off and that's not great. This plant needs to establish itself. So what I've done here is potted it down fairly shallow, about 50%, if not a smidge more of this endocarp is still somewhat submerged, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. Like I said, I'm not confident that I can actually pull this off yet without really hurting the plant. So ultimately I need to protect this from rotting and to protect these roots from dying off. I want them to develop a callus. Palm trees uh, and even the coconut palms, they can have a pretty good amount of exposed root. It just isn't something that should be brought upon them suddenly. It needs to be gradual and happen over time. Now, if this were a bonsai tree and I were trying to train it to have exposed roots, then I would probably layer some sheet moss over the exposed roots and then slowly over time, peel that back and slowly expose the roots that are growing above the soil to the elements. Can't really do that with this because like I said, we want to avoid rot. So the main thing I think I'm going to try and do here is just fill this just to about here with seashells. And I know that that might seem kind of odd, but there's a reason I chose seashells. One, because I have them. I have a whole bunch of them laying around, so they'll work for this purpose, the purpose of just basically trying to keep too much airflow around those roots that are exposed down there. I had thought about using some kind of rock or just gravel, probably lava, that's what I have most of around here. But that actually, I think, might hold in too much moisture. Lava stone, one of the great things about it, and why I like using lava in a lot of my soil blends, is because it's very porous. And all those pores provide surface area for good bacteria and fungus to grow, things that help end up releasing nitrogen and helping the roots develop around the plant. There's a lot of beneficial stuff that can happen within the lava stone. But on the flip side of that, the, well, you can end up with bad bacteria growing inside all of those pores. And I just want to avoid anything like that if I can. So while this is certainly not 
traditional and it looks a little bit dumb. I don't know, seashells are cute, I suppose. This is the direction I've decided to go to help protect those roots. I'm just going to make sure that these are piled up here. I'm going to help keep out a decent amount of light from shocking those roots because they haven't been exposed to light before. They're not used to it. There's still going to be enough airflow in here that hopefully this won't rot out. Like I said, hopefully, no guarantees there. And it's not so much of a heavy layer that it's going to keep the surface of the soil, which is down kind of low in here, going to make it so that hopefully enough air can get in there so that this doesn't stay saturated for too long. Coconut palms like to be watered, but they don't necessarily want to be sitting and sopping wet or overly moist soil for too long. I do have most of these shells piled up there right around the base of the palm, but I want to make sure that there's still some over here because I want to, I don't want the soil to be uneven either. So if there's a whole bunch right here, then the soil in this area is probably not going to dry as quickly as the soil over here. And even moisture is still important. I'm also trying to use this as an opportunity to go ahead and help kind of support this somewhat so it doesn't get moved around too much, but I'll probably go ahead and throw a garden stake in this to keep it from blowing around because they tend to kind of take their sweet time getting rooted in. There we go. So there's that. And this isn't really a how-to video. I'm just more talking through the process here because I have been asked before about what to do when the actual outside of the coconut starts to rot. And uh, this is kind of a rare opportunity to sort of talk about that and really just kind of talk about my thought process with dealing with this kind of a situation. Sort of a unique situation hopefully not one that you'll even have to deal with with your coconuts. This is a little bit more vlog style than being very formal. It can be helpful sometimes to go through the process of what's going through my mind in the videos because then maybe that'll help whoever's watching the video maybe relate to some of those issues or sort of go through the process of eliminations with what needs to be done for your specific situation. And I don't even know if this is going to work. I don't really see any reason why it won't. That shouldn't hold in so much moisture that it's going to cause rot. Slowly pull these back over the next next few weeks and uh, start to expose those roots to the conditions so that they'll kind of callus off and I won't have to worry about them dying off because right now this plant needs every single bit of root that it has. Not an all established plant, very much still a baby, so working on getting its roots put down. That's why I'm trying to make sure to preserve as many of those as possible. And not to mention that since I pulled that wet husk off of the endocarp and I was able to feel it moving, for all I know, I may have done damage between that endocarp and the actual plant, which would be bad. And it has some roots on it. Not a lot, but some. So this is also going to be kind of a waiting game. We'll just have to see what happens here. This is not the ideal time of year for something like this. Traditionally, spring would be great because it would have time to fight through getting this nut off of it and putting down fresh roots. But moving here into the off season, not a dormant season, but a resting season for the plant. I don't have to grow it in a matter where it will rest. I have a grow space that's pretty warm, but even for coconuts, like sometimes the warmest of <laughs> warm grow spaces isn't always the best way to go for these during the winter time. That's just been my experience. Traditionally, I've always found that these do better when you just kind of give them a little bit of space and let them chill more during the winter than trying to keep them hot and humid and well lit and watered thoroughly and well not thoroughly but watered consistently I should say. That's when you start to have issues with rot and those sorts of things. That's just how I grow them. There are lots of different ways of growing these. There should have already been a video out prior to this one on growing these actual coconuts. I just thought I'd bring y'all along for the mess and chaos. It is my thought process behind troubleshooting a rotten nut on the coconut palms. And that's gonna do it. Tips, tricks, suggestions, comment down below. I always appreciate it. Helps everybody learn. This is not an uncommon problem as far as that rotting exocarp on the coconut. So anything people have to offer, always fantastic. I did, I should have mentioned, there are other preventative measures that could be taken, like making sure that this gets, I'd say a bi-weekly application of some neem around that area. That's a natural fungicide. Something I will probably also do just preventatively is just a light misting of some neem in a spray bottle around the that nut that's in there to make sure it doesn't rot. Eventually, at some point, it's going to rot. This just isn't the ideal time of year for it. Not at all. You don't want rotting around the plant, period, especially when they're in a pot, especially when they're in the house and things aren't warm and the plant isn't actively growing and doesn't have its immune system up at its optimal levels. You get it, that's all that stuff. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And like I said, don't forget to comment down below. Everybody usually has a lot to offer when it comes to growing coconut palms, particularly as a house plant. So let's all learn together, get our plant nerd on. Throughout the vlogs, I'll try and have updates on what's going on here, but for the most part, 
think we're up to speed on the chaos that is this coconut palm. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.